You're looking at a wide shot of the ring and bouncing around in the middle of it was Jimmy Ellis and Jerry Quarry right there in the green velvet robe. He's wearing green velvet pants. Ellis will be or is in that uh, yellow sequined robe. Let's quickly run down the fighters' records. Jerry Quarry has fought 31 fights. He's 126, lost only one Eddie Machen. He has drawn four times. Jimmy Ellis is 125. He lost five. Jimmy has won 13 by the knockout route. Jerry has won 15 by the knockout route. Jimmy Lennon, the public address announcement, is going to be introducing some fighters who are here tonight. By the Bonanza Boxing Club of Oakland, California, presented by Don Charge. And now, fans here at Ringside, if you will rise, please, and join with me in our national anthem. was Jimmy Lennon singing the anthem. Ladies and, and there again are the records of the fighters previously delineated. Ellis Tell winning 25, losing 5, 13 by KO. Quarry winning 26, losing 1, drawing 4, 15 by KO. Both fighters, incidentally, have already worked up sweats with their shadow boxing. Each fighter carries with them a four-day stubble of beer. And I am talking over PA announcer Jimmy Lennon because at the moment he is dealing in routine matters and you should know who the officials are tonight. The referee is Elmer Costa of San Leandro, California, a former amateur welterweight, 15 years around here as a referee. The introductions go on by the public address announcer. The judges tonight will be Freddie Apostoli, remember him, of San Francisco, former middleweight champion of the world, and Rudy Ortega of Oakland, California. He was a judge in the Spencer Quarry fight. The timekeeper will be Joe Leopold. I stopped for that introduction because Ringo was in this tournament, became a semifinalist, but was beaten, as we described earlier, by Jimmy Ellis. Mel Turnbow, a heavyweight who'll be fighting Buster Mathis in a matter of days in Florida. Welterweight boxing champion of the world, Classy Curtis Coates. And the welterweight champion of the world, Curtis Coates, who successfully defended a week or ten days ago in Texas. The ring and the rules tonight. He's running down the officials, Mr. Lennon is, so let's make note of the fact that this is a 20-foot ring. The fighter's using 10-ounce gloves. That makes a knockout more difficult, a protective measure after the death of Davey Moore in a bout in this state in 1963. 
We will have the mandatory eight count. No three knockdown rule. The fight does not end if there are three knockdowns within the round. No being saved by the bell. In Ellis's corner will be Angie Dundee as manager. Chicky Ferrara, su superb cut man. In Quarry's corner. Here's the introduction of Jimmy Ellis. The fighters, as you can see, are getting the instructions from the referee. In Quarry's corner, to get back to what I was saying, will be Johnny Flores, his co-manager. His dad, Jack, is also his co-manager. And Teddy Bentham, another superb cut man, will be working in Jerry's corner. This one is scheduled for 15 rounds. <laughs> Round one. Quick left, no damage. Jimmy came in with a right, again no damage. Quarry in the green velvet trunks, Ellis in the white trunks with the black stripe. That's his best punch and a good left. Watch Quarry when he's pinned against the ropes. He can bounce off. He is a great counter punch. left jab that we talked about earlier that's the way Ellis is going to have to fight this fight sticking and moving if he is to win it in the opinion of most watch quarry with the head feints he is not swift to foot he does not come forward well nor does he go back well but he is tough and strong and tricky Crowd excited about a quarry right to the back of Ellis's head that meant nothing. We have one minute to go, and this is the first round. down to 30 seconds. Jerry coming right at him, as he said, cutting that ring on him. Ellis is staying away in the latter stages much more than he did in the early going. Focus on 
22 year old Jerry Quarry the adversary Angelo Dundee uh, uh, Jimmy Ellis is 28 Angelo Dundee is working as you can see on a cut a very thin cut over Ellis's left eye it occurred with about 45 seconds to go in the first round leaning over Ellis is Ferdy Pacheco a well-known doctor in Miami who has worked with Muhammad Ali with Willie Pastrano with Luis Rodriguez with all the fighters who have been handled by Angelo Dundee lead by Ellis the way Quarry wants to fight this fight. Those strong punches to the body. Quarry is now dripping blood over his right eye. He is cut cut more badly than Ellis was in the first round. Thus far in this round, Ellis is fighting his fight, staying at jabbing distance, staying away, Flicking that left in there, and it was the left that cut Jerry's right eye. Come on, Jimmy, you got him, baby. Come on, Jimmy. Take him, Jimmy. Good job. Come on, Jimmy. We have a minute to go in the second round. Yancey Durham is sitting next to me. Yancey, a very clever manager of unbeaten Joe Frazier champion, as you know, in five states are recognized as such. Thirty seconds to go. Yancey's scoring will give us an unofficial barometer, but a knowledgeable barometer of how the fight is going. Quarry in the green velvet, Jerry, uh, Jimmy in the white. Nancy Durham at the moment has Ellis ahead, one point to none. He scored the second round even, gave the first round to Ellis. Quarry's right eye has been neatly patched up by Teddy Benson. Quarry has 
been shaken twice thus far in the round. The first was Ellis' sneaky right hand uppercut. Most people think Quarry is the stronger puncher. Angelo Dundee has been insisting that his man is the better puncher and a very underrated puncher. The crowd is booing, but Ellis is fighting his fight at this moment, and he is not about to change. There's a right lead by Ellis to the side of Quarry's face, and it's stung. Jerry coming at him, coming at him, but not connecting. Then Quarry got in a right to Ellis's midsection. The left did nothing, the right connected. We have 35 seconds to go in this, the third round. Quarry is trying and trying and trying to get inside on Ellis. Ellis is controlling the strategy of the fight, the tactics, at least at this moment. 15 seconds to go in the third round. right now is complaining to referee El Macosta. Angie spoke to me before this fight and said there's one thing I want. I want a loud bell. I don't want one of those ding-a-ling bells because Quarry's tactic is to be a 10-second fighter at the end of each round to persuade the judges and he often punches after the bell and that's what Dundee was complaining about. This is not to say that Quarry was punching after the bell. It is to describe what Dundee was complaining about. That flurry at the end was a good flurry, an even exchange of punches, really, by the fighters with Ellis against the ropes, ducking, bobbing, weaving, trying to avoid Quarry's inside punishment. And as you see the ropes during the course of this fight, you won't see the ropes like these in many other states. They are not padded ropes. They are rubber ropes. And a man's body can get burned and stunned by ropes like these. Round four. You can understand the crowd's reaction to that. moment Yancey Durham has Ellis ahead two points to none we are in the fourth round quarry in the green velvet Ellis in the white trunks with the black stripe Nat Fleischer Mr. Boxing on the other side of me has Ellis ahead three points to none and a half into round four. Quarry keeps coming in straight, trying desperately to get inside to work on Ellis's body. That right missed. Quarry shakes his head in disgust as Ellis backs away. We have a minute to go in the round. A quick left by Ellis, connected against Quarry's face. The 
remember, California scores on a five-point system that differs from other states. The winner of a round gets from one to five points. The loser gets none. An even round gives no score to either fighter. It is, it is possible for a man to lose on rounds but win the fight on points. And that's what happened, as most saw it, in the Quarry Patterson fight. Less than 15 seconds left in the fourth round. A good right lead by Ellis caught Quarry. We're back with round five. Quarry doesn't seem to be making the attack that had been expected of him. Not to Yancey Durham, anyway, who has just commented that he thought somehow Quarry would get in there and level the body punishment. He got a left to the body. Yancey, of course, is Yancey Durham, the manager of the unbeaten heavyweight Joe Frazier, who is recognized as champion in five states. Quarry got in a good left to Ellis's midsection then. Quarry is getting in more blows, a right to the face then. Eric Quarry in the green velvet trunks, Jimmy Ellis in the white trunks with the black stripe. Thus far, Quarry appears much more aggressive this round than he has been up till now. A good right to the body by Quarry. Quarry's best round so far, up till now, no question. Remember this about the body punches. They may not appear immediately to undo a man, but the accumulative impact over a span of rounds debilitates a man. A minute to go, and this is the fifth round. A good left to the body by Quarry. This round, Quarry is fighting the fight the way he said he would when we talk to him before the fight. This round, he is dominating the strategy and the tactics. We have 30 seconds to go in this round. The fifth. is trying to sucker Ellis into the ropes. All right, slow motion. Watch for Quarry's right into Ellis's midsection. That hit and that hurt. I wish you could hear the thud again and then a left. This was the round that Quarry took on the role of the aggressor. This was the round he pulled Ellis around by brute strength, and there you saw a good right to the face. Now we're back to the live situation. The wide shot of the ring, the fighters in their respective corners. Quarry being told by his man and Ellis being told by his man what they should do now. Quarry's being told, keep going at him, going at him, get inside, hit that body. <laughs> Round six.
crowd boos Ellis continuously for the tactic of backing away, but that's not about to change Ellis's battle plan. Quarry is what we call an upright fighter, by the way, which renders him vulnerable to the jab. He stands straight up. There's no crouching. And as you watch Quarry, get a look at his right foot. He is on the toe. And it limits his balance, it limits his mobility. Quarry is now dominating the fight in terms of tactics and at this moment in terms of punching. a minute and a half to go in this round. Round six. Wari in the green velvet trunks. Ellis in the white trunks with the black stripes. I trust you saw that. Ellis saying, huh, and backing off with a smile. We have one minute to go in this round, and little has happened in it because Ellis is staying away. Noise from the crowd, but a dull round. No damage there, the crowd overexcited. Twenty seconds to go. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. The bell for round seven here in the Oakland Coliseum. Jerry Quarry against Jimmy Ellis. Our unofficial scorekeeper, Yancey Durham, Joe Frazier's manager, has Ellis ahead now, three points to two, Quarry coming on. Strictly unofficial, but as I said earlier, a good barometer. Both of these fighters in their careers have been accused of lack of stamina. They now come into the seventh round. Each appears stronger than we saw them in past bouts at this stage. chanting for action. Last round and thus far this round there has been little action. That was a left by Quarry that missed. Ellis is a lot more flat-footed than he was in the early going. Quarry registering facial disgust with the tactic. A good right to the stomach by Quarry. that Ellis is not sticking that left in there the way he was in the early rounds. Fatigue may be a part of it. It was when he was sticking that left in there that he was dominating this bout.
We only have 30 seconds to go in this round. A good right, a sneak right by Ellis. Good punch. of Ellis's in slow motion. Watch for it now. It's, it's, it's Ellis's best punch. Beautiful shot. That shook quarry. That's Ellis's most effective punch. Jerry is sitting just above us. And Johnny Flores, his manager, is telling him to watch out for it. Now you're looking at Jimmy with Angie over him. Don't forget, tomorrow on ABC, the Byron Nelson Golf Classic, Dallas, Texas, 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. With all the great ones on hand. Including Byron himself, by the way. round as you see Barry Quarry in the green velvet trunks Jimmy Ellis in the white with the black stripe Yancey Durham scored that last round for Quarry despite that punch and he has it an even fight three and three that was a good left into the chest by Quarry sorry Yance I don't agree with you Jerry tried to tried to come in there with that left as you saw, but it fell on Ellis's arms. At least his right arm. to Ellis's left shoulder, a left to Ellis's right shoulder. Neither punch doing damage. A minute to go now, and this the eighth round. In perfect truth, neither fighter has been what you would call prepossessing during the last three rounds. There you saw a stinging blow as we have 35 seconds left in this round. Quarry in the green velvet, Ellis in the white with the black stripe. Jimmy Ellis going back to his corner, and we're going to show you that punch again in slow motion. Again, it's the right, Ellis's best blow. 
course, everybody, including Ellis, never really knew how good his left hook was until the Bonavina fight. When, as you saw at the very top of the show, Jimmy floored Bonavina with a left hook in the 10th round. You're watching Jerry Quarry, who appears a little tired, but so does Ellis, for that matter. Standing before the bell sounding for the start of the ninth round. Come on, right to the side of Quarry's head and then a left, but neither blow really strong. At the moment, by the way, Yancey Durham's unofficial scoring shows Ellis ahead, four to three in points. Again, the right to Quarry. That sneak right has been Ellis's big blow the last two rounds and so far this one. Now Nat Fleischer, Mr. Boxing, famed editor and publisher of Ring Magazine, tells me that's the way he's got it. Ellis four, Quarry three. These men are not the scorers of the fight. But they're providing us with some valuable index. strength than I think I've ever seen him show, at least up to this point. Quarry striking back in desperation, trying to rescue this round at least. The left jab flicking in there. Quarry misses. Quarry again misses. One minute to go in the round, round nine. The left connected by Quarry to the chest, but not strong. Connect the crowd went wild, but it did not land. Had it landed, you would have seen Ellis stagger. 30 seconds to go. Quarry had uh, the late foot in this round, as is so often the case. Ellis had the early foot. 15 seconds to go. round Jerry Quarry against Jimmy Ellis a very close fight in the scoring no matter who scores it at the moment this is a close one. this of course is a 15 rounder for the World Boxing Association version of the heavyweight championship and much controversy and perfect candor surrounds that Jimmy has not been able to work his against the rope tactics in this fight. You just saw him trying again to sucker, uh, Jerry that is, Jimmy into the ropes. Oh, another good right lead. Good sneaky right. I Ellis against Clark. Two minutes to go in this the 10th round.
tonight, I think you will agree, for those of you who turned in, tuned in early, has really followed the pattern of the free fight in it. Ellis in the main trying to stay at jabbing distance. Quarry trying to get inside. Another good right by Ellis. Quarry's a tough customer, though. He can take a punch. We have a minute to go in round 10. Less than 30 seconds to go, as you can see, and this the 10th round. The round dominated by Ellis's right, and that time it was a left as Quarry was coming into him. A left by Quarry against the chest. And we're going to show you in slow motion the first of three very effective rights thrown by Ellis in that round against Quarry. Watch it now. The left missing, but opening Quarry up. And now the right. Back to live action. We are between the 10th and 11th. We are between the 10th and 11th rounds here in the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. Jimmy Ellis against Jerry Quarry of the World Boxing Association version of the heavyweight title. Jerry Quarry, the man in your picture now, wearing green velvet trunks. Instructions from Johnny Flores's manager. That left. Him away, left to Bellis can keep Flory away. Come on, come on. Remember, California has a unique system of scoring one to five points to be given to the winner of a round. Nobody ever gets five, men get two or three if they score a knockdown. Loser of a round gets no points if a round is scored as even, each fighter gets no points. It is possible for one man to win nine rounds and another six. And the other six, and still for the winner of the nine rounds to lose the fight based upon the points if knockdowns occurred in several of those six rounds won by the adversary. What you hear now is Jerry Quarry's corner screaming at Jerry to keep punching him. Under and over, under and over. Under and over, he is saying. Of course, I'm over, that's it. he's not in the ring, but he knows what he wants on, his man to do. Thank you. 
I don't know who's going to be the winner of this fight at this moment. But I've got to tell you, that both fighters have grown up a lot in terms of pacing themselves, themselves and stamina. Jimmy Ellis, I first saw, he used to die around the fourth or fifth round. And Parry was the same against Patterson in two fights. After the fifth round, he had nothing. The crowd is yelling for Quarry. They want Quarry to come on. He's a native Californian. It's perfectly understandable. Twelfth round, and they come out fighting. Quarry in green. Ellis White with the black stripe. Instructions to Quarry were basic in the corner. Between rounds, go at him, go at him, go at him. Dundee was telling his man, stick him, stick him, stick him, stick him and move. Nancy Durham sitting next to me, Joe Frazier's manager, has the fight scored as even thus far. Matt Fleischer, Mr. Boxing, has the fight scored Ellis 6, Quarry 4 so far. Minute and a half to go in this round, round 12. He came out fighting, but there's been a noticeable letdown in the pace. section by Quarry, a right to the head by Ellis, but both flows without steam. They look a little tired now, don't they, Yancey? Yes, they do. They both seem to be losing a lot of steam. with 20 seconds to go, 18, 17, and little, if any, action in it. A little flurry there by Jerry. That's one of his great traits. At the end of a round to fight in a flurry. We'll be back with more of the World Heavyweight Championship fight after this word from our local stations. round the bell Laurie against Ellis Laurie in the green velvet trunks once again Ellis in the white with the black and a right lead by Ellis that connected Jimmy's best blow tonight a left jab by Jimmy perhaps his most important blow to keep at jabbing distance from Quarry but the right doing the punishment when he landed Notice how a good left, and Ellis is hurt. Ellis is hurt. A good left by Quarry. Another left to the head by Quarry. Quarry now trying to move in. Quarry senses that he's got him, slowed him down. 
Ellis is hurt. He is a little rubbery leg. He's got to dance and move to stay alive. This time, Quarry got him against the ropes. <laughs> you can believe me, I am close to Ellis. That right glazed him. It did not, did not do real damage. Ellis's eyes, however, are glazed. Quarry's corner is yelling, don't wait, go in and at him. Go in and at him. But he is not doing it. He's trying to tra trap him with that rope tactic that he has not been able to employ tonight. Quarry is trying to trap Ellis. Now he's back away. Ellis in the center of the ring and Quarry away from the ropes. This is the 13th round of a scheduled 15 round. And by far the most damage inflicted by Quarry upon Ellis has been done in this round. Timer in the corner for yourselves. Ellis coming back but stopped as he came in. He had landed with a right, but Quarry stopped him coming in with a good left. Good round for Quarry. Good round for Quarry. Round 14, the exhortation from this corner. Go on, Jerry, he's tired, go get him. The unofficial point scoring to my left and to my right. Nat Fleischer, Mr. Boxing, makes the fight even. Yancey Durham has Quarry a hit by one point. Round 14, Quarry in green, Ellis White with the black stripe. to go. No action of any kind in this round thus far. Thus, the mingled boos and jeers of the crowd that you hear. In fairness to the fighters, they've gone 13. And they are tired. wasn't hit then. He slipped, shook his head. Just fatigue overtaking both men. A flurry there, but no real damage by either fighter. A right there, but not as strong as it was in the earlier rounds.
15th and final round. And then Angie Dundee screaming at the ref because he felt that Clary sneak punched Ellis as the two were shaking hands before the true advent of the round. Each fighter will try desperately to make a last round impression on the officials. Jerry Quarry is fighting in his home state of California. Some sophisticated sports scribes of other states feel that this will be a weighty factor as they remember past decisions involving Jerry's fights. Under any circumstances, though, one would have to admit that this has been a close fight. a minute to go in the fight. The fighters are manifestly tired. And a quick recap from our barometer scoring system. Matt Fleischer, the ring magazine, has Ellis ahead by one point. Nancy Durham, Joe Frazier's manager, has Quarry ahead by one point. this fight ends this reporter will jump into the ring wait the decision interview the winner and possibly time permits the loser As you can see, I'm standing in the middle of the ring. We await the decision, and it's an interesting thing. Jerry Quarry is being congratulated by his friends. Jimmy Ellis is being congratulated by his friends. Each, ex you see a shot of Quarry even as I talk. Now Jimmy Ellis, and uh, I wonder if the confidence on either side is as real as they pretend. And now we're ready for Jimmy Lennon and the official announcement. Your attention, fans. I will read the point totals. We have a split decision. And ringside, judging Rudy Ortega sees it six for Quarry, six for Ellis. He scores at a draw. He is overruled by the judge and the referee. Judge Apostoli has a five in favor of Ellis. Referee Elmer Costa, seven to six in favor of Ellis. The winner, new heavyweight champion, Lassie Jimmy That decision speaks Ellis. for itself. Jimmy Ellis has won the World Boxing Association version of the heavyweight championship on a split decision. One official giving it overwhelmingly to Jimmy, the other very closely. Let's get you fellas into this picture. Come on, Angelo. You know the maxim that's grown in boxing now. Angie. I'm trying to keep my earphone in and it's no longer possible, so I'm going to forget it. Let me have you fellas. Let me have you fellas. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Later. Later. Hey, that's a baby. 
maybe he's going to get tired. <laughs> I think the picture speaks well enough. All right, now, Angie, yeah. Jimmy, face that camera, and I want to talk to you. Yeah. Did you think that 10 to 5 count in Jimmy's favor was for real? Oh, yeah. I had him way out. He did the job. He made the guy look silly walking away from just what we wanted to do, Daddy. I think you may be a little extreme. No, no, you can be as extreme as you want. He's the champion now. Now fight my fight, now. You feel you fought your fight. You catch him at jabbing just right. He's good on the ropes, and I know he's good on the ropes. And like I said, I don't fall in no traps. I try to fight my fight. And that's what I did, set out to do. How about the 13th round? Did you? Well, he caught me with a good shot. It was in kind of to the back of the head, but it, was, it didn't do too much. But it was a good shot, but it didn't ever put me out of, out of commission, you know? I just want to see if I can get one of Jerry's men out of the picture. Forgive me, if you will. Well, when did you feel you heard him? Well, I heard him uh, 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 never, every round at the first beginning. I caught him some good right hands. I caught him one good right hand on the ropes. I thought it was all over. Early in the fight, I caught him in a good right uppercut, and I thought it was over. But Jerry's a tough kid. He's a good, he's a good potential. And I think the guy should be ready number two. Well, you've got a problem now, Angie. What, what happens problem? next? What problem? Well, I'm looking at Yancey Durham. I got, I got, tell them what we got for him. <laughs> we got to get him out, Jones. Undefeated. We got a police group. Good undefeated. Enough, uh, 21 fights are straight now, Joe <laughs> Fraser. All right? Okay, They're both well. undefeated, so it'll be a nice match. Right. <laughs> all he can do is line up. That's all. Line them all up, we'll fight them. Right. He's going to be a fighting champ, I told you before. All right, is he going to fight Joe Fraser? We'll, in due time, we'll fight everybody. Just tell him to line up. Everybody. What do you mean, in due time? That's your business. My business, I know in due time. <laughs> now, you've got another problem since you're so gloriously happy. You've got back-to-back -back champions. You've become a maxim in boxing. They now say you don't pick against Dundee any more than you pick against Vince Lombardi in pro football. Thank God. But you were <laughs> Muhammad Ali's trainer and manager, for that matter. What if Muhammad comes back? Whom would you represent? I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. It'll be a pretty bridge. I ain't worried about it right now. I'm happy I got this guy. He's the champion right now, period. How's that? Fair enough? Well, it's fair enough from your point of view, except that you're not telling this public your true feelings about your point. I'm giving my true feelings. Muhammad Ali was a great champion. I agree with you. But present tense now. Jimmy Oz did a great job. He won the tournament. We're in good shape. How do you think, Jimmy, you would do against Joe Frazier? Well, uh, like I said, I'm not thinking about Joe Frazier. What I'm a man to say, I'm but I'm, manager, I want to be a fighting champion. I'm the manager. In advance. Believe me, he's a in I'm the manager. <laughs> <laughs> well, the diminutive little manager of Jimmy Ellis, the man who did so much to make Muhammad Ali the undefeated champion that he was. I was a three-round fighter, but now I'm a 15-round fighter. Well, Jimmy, Louis Saria, could you move over so that we can keep Jimmy in the picture? Jimmy's latest What did I tell you from the get-go, uh, Howard, when we were back in Houston, Texas on August the 5th? I said they'd be calling me a three-round fight. I'd be the world's heavyweight champion, and they'll still be standing. And that's what it is now, Howard. You think you proved tonight, once and for all, I that think you've I got the stamina? I think I proved everybody tonight. You got it. What do you want? Prove the champion will have Quite understandably, the photographers are screaming <laughs> to get it, Angie and Jimmy. Great. Is Jerry Quarry here, or has he gone? Yeah. Jerry is gone. Yeah. Too bad. I had hoped that we'd be able in this chaotic situation to get talk with Jerry. His disappointment is understandable. We are going to leave them. Angie, congratulations, and Jimmy, congratulations. Once again, the winner of the fight tonight by a split decision was Jimmy Ellis. The executive producer of the World Heavyweight Championship Elimination Tournament was Rune Knowledge. Coverage of the fight was produced by Chet Forty, directed by Andy Sedaris. Our associate director was Joe Assetti. Technical director Dave Seely. Remember, tomorrow at 4 p.m., ABC Sports will bring you the Byron Nelson Golf Classic, live and in color from Dallas, Texas. And be sure to be with us next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports for the International Cross-Country Motorcycle Racing Championship from Simi Valley, California, the 1968 World Figure Skating Champions Exhibition from Geneva, Switzerland, both in color. Now, this is Howard Cosell saying so long from Oakland, California. Nationwide airline transportation for the World Heavyweight Championship fight arranged in promotional consideration provided by TWA, the all-jet airline. You're up, up, and away. TWA. This has been an ABC Television Network sports presentation. <laughs>